I'm going to share with you the top three nutrition strategies riders use for the international six days enduro and how you can implement these strategies into your own racing. Even if you're not a professional racer, even if you can't ride every day, even if you have to work full time and you can only ride the bike once per week and you don't have hours and hours to be prepping food every race day. So before we get into it, we're going to be looking through a video here of some of the highlights for Spain. I think this is day one here from FIM uh, Moto TV, which has got some of the riding footage. But before we get into that, what we need to be able to understand is that there's two things actually. Number one is your primary fuel source when you're out riding is carbohydrates. Carbs are your primary fuel source that it's using and that it likes to have that's most efficient for your body to be able to run. So it's like the equivalent of, you know, you've got race fuel for your bike, you've got 98 octane, you've got 91 octane, right? We want to be putting race fuel in and that's our carbohydrates for the ride. So if we have a look here at this um, track map, this is for day, I think it was for day one. Um, and they're doing two laps. So 250 kilometers, it's like 125 Ks a lap. And then they've got, I had written down here, they've got six special tests to be able to do. So obviously during those special tests, you're using a lot more energy compared to the transport sections in between, but you still are using a lot of energy because you're spending up to eight hours a day um, out on the bike. The other thing that you need to be able to know is that when you are getting out there and you're riding, you are using a lot, a lot of calories because you're on the bike for so long. So you could be burning up to, or could be around 5,000 calories over a whole day, could be up to, or around 400 calories per hour of actual riding. And obviously it depends on the intensity. So the, the footage we've got here is obviously one of the um, tests. So they're riding a lot hard for you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the, the section. So burning through a lot more energy compared to the transport sections where it's a little bit lower intensity. Yes, you've still got the time cap, but you're just not pushing your body as hard. So calories are really, really important. Um, and they're what allow you to be able to give you the energy overall, okay? It's the volume of energy that you have to be able to ride the bike hard. So really important to make sure that your body has the fuel. Otherwise, what happens over like a multi-day event like the six day is you might be all right for the first day, but then that starts to catch up to you on day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and you start to get to those later days and it's like you really don't even want to wake up and get out there because your body is just absolutely cooked. You're just in, in full-on survival mode. So there's three strategies I'm going to share um, that you can use. The first strategy is having big calorie dense meals um, before the race and after the race. So if we go back here um, to the start, these guys are getting ready before the race. This guy had a bit of a mechanical, but the race I'm pretty sure was kicking off at 8.30 a.m. here, okay, for um, this day. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're getting the bulk of your calories and the bulk of your nutrition in when you're not actually riding because it's very hard to be able to stomach food and get it in and digest it while you're actually riding. So that's where you want to get your breakfast in, okay? Make sure you're getting that in about three or four hours before you go and ride. And then also you want to do that straight after you ride in dinner time and get a heap of calories in so you can get all your digestion done while you're recovering rather than trying to force feed yourself while you're riding when your body's not going to want the food, you're not going to feel like having the food, and it's not going to get the nutrients it wants anyway. The benefits of doing that and getting organized before you do all of this stuff is that you're going to have your fuel tank, your body's fuel tank at 100% before you even start the day, and that's the goal. Every day you want your, your body's fuel tank to be at 100% and have all the energy it could possibly need to be able to chew through as you get through the day. And that happens four hours before all of this stuff, before you have staging and getting ready and getting organized, you've got to get yourself organized and make sure that you're fueled and ready to go. The bike's easy to fuel. You just stick fuel in and off you go. Your body is the thing that riders often forget. Um, timing is really important with food. So for before and after, as I said, four hours before you go and race and the race starts, that's when you want to be getting the bulk of your calories in with like proteins, it could be fat and also with carbs as well, carbohydrates as well. The reason you want four hours before is because you're putting so much food in so many calories, it's going to take a lot of time for your body to digest that. So you want to give it plenty of time to be able to do that. So if you're, if you're racing at 8.30 and you start doing this stuff at 8 o'clock because you forgot about it and weren't organized, you're just going to feel shit. You're going to feel terrible because you're going to have so much food in your tummy. You're not going to have actually digested the food and have the energy available to use anyway. Um, and that's where riders stuff up with this. 
is they'll get out and they'll be riding, like this rider here, and you'll be out there and all you'll be thinking about is, oh, my stomach, my stomach. Like, you won't even be able to focus. Like, you can see how technical or hard the riding is as it is. The riding's hard enough on its own. Riding for eight hours is hard enough on its own, let alone trying to do that with a stomach ache where you've just force fed yourself. Or the other end, you haven't fed yourself at all and you're just running on empty and you can't even keep a straight line out on the track um, because you just can't focus. All you're thinking about is food or not having any energy and trying to survive the race. Um, there's something that I want to show you guys here. So when you do this, like first of all, when you do nail the nutrition side of things for this, you go into the race with a lot of consistent energy. You don't have those like ups and down, as many of those ups and downs throughout the race. But again, all of that work is done before the race and the night before. You can't go, if you don't do that stuff before and you haven't filled up your fuel tank, it's very, very hard to be able to fill up your fuel tank while you're flogging the shit out of yourself while you're riding and burning through a whole heap of energy and putting your body under a lot of stress. Your body doesn't digest food very well when it's under stress. So doing it while you're riding is going to be a um, an extremely hard task and you're probably going to come away disappointed. So there's something that I want to show you here. It's called the satiety index. And what the satiety index is, is it's a, a test that they did or a study that they did. And what they did is they ranked food on how filling they are for the amount of calories that you got. So I think they did a test with 240 calories and they gave out all these different types of foods to different people and they had a specific system for racing it to see which foods actually filled people up the most for the 240 calories. And so there's some foods that didn't really fill people up people much at all for the 240 calories and there's some foods that filled people up so much for the 240 calories. Now normally, if you're trying to lose weight or you're not riding for up to eight hours a day, then you'd want to go with the foods that fill you up a lot for the 240 calories because you want to try and make yourself feel full. If you feel full, you don't eat as much food. It's easier to keep yourself leaner or to be able to lose weight. In this case, we want to go the opposite because we're burning through so many calories and where you need so much energy. We want foods that don't fill us up very much that are high in calories to be able to, get, to meet our, say, 5,000 calories um, for a day of racing. So if we have a look here at this list, you'll see that 100% is based on bread. So white bread they used as like a, an anchor point is 100%. And then everything is either more filling than white bread or less filling than white bread, okay? So obviously, when you eat white bread, it doesn't fill you up much at all anyway. So you can see here, like croissants, cakes, donuts, don't fill you up much at all. They're at like 47%, 65%, 68%, right? They're very high in calories, very high in sugar, um, very high in like oil-based uh, fats. So it could be like butter which have a shit ton of calories in them, but don't really fill you up. So you can see like the shittier types of foods are the ones that are generally um, not gonna fill you up as much. And then you've got the healthier types of foods. So you've got things like boiled potatoes, you've got oatmeal, you've got oranges, apples. They fill you up a lot. So as great as these foods are, for this specific event where you're just chewing through calories, chewing through calories, chewing through calories, you want to be maximizing foods that don't fill you up that much. So what you can use is you can use things like, say, uh, like white rice, okay? If it's around that 100, 110% mark, you can use cheeses, you can use eggs. Um, you could use, like if you're really struggling to get your calories in like the night before, then you can use things like ice cream, which are more of like a liquid form. You could even use like donuts and cake. Again, like they're not a everyday prescription or recommendation. It's specifically for these events where you are just smashing through so many calories it's almost physically impossible to be able to refuel all of those calories that you're burning through using healthy foods. So if you were to eat like potatoes and fish and some of these most filling foods there, you're going to find it extremely hard to get 5,000 calories in because you're just going to be so full and, you, and they've got so much fiber in it, you're not going to be able to get all the calories in. So it's not about just going one or the other. You're not just going, oh, I'm just going to eat Mars bars all day or I'm you know, just going to eat cake all day. It's about getting most of your calories in through good quality foods and then to be able to get the extra calories in, that's where you can use things like ice cream or you can use things like uh, lollies or cookies or um, croissants or cake or donuts or things like that to be able to get those calories in to make sure that you're ready to rock and roll. Because remember, your body at this point is just a calorie burning furnace. It's just chewing through calories, chewing through energy. So it just, it needs stuff to be able to burn on. Um, because when it doesn't have anything to burn on, anything to run on, that's when you start to run into trouble because your body's just, it's got no energy. You're burning off way too many calories compared to what you're putting in the fuel tank. It's exactly like your bike. You know, if you don't run your bike on any fuel, it's not gonna go anywhere. And that's the same for your body.
If we go back to our video over here, uh, where do we go? We'll go here. Um, strategy number two is carb gels and sports drinks. So we'll hop along here and have a look at these special tests. And let's see what we got. So these guys don't have packs on, so they might have taken them off or they might be um, underneath for the tests. Um, I'm not sure. But carb gels and sports drinks are your go-to for giving your body the carbs that it needs through the race. So you could be burning, say, 400 calories per hour of riding, okay, depending on the intensity of the riding. So that's up to, let's say, 100 grams of carbs that you're burning through for every hour. Some of those hours you'll burn through a lot more because it might be more technical, more demanding. Um, like these sections here that we're looking at where um, it's more motocrossy, grass track type stuff where it's quite intense and short, sharp races and your body's working hard and your heart rate's up, then um, you're going to be burning through a lot more carbs. So the way that we, there's two strategies or two things that you can work on to top up your carbs. Um, so let's have a look what I've got written down here. So I'll show you some carb gels. So these are just some carb gels I found um, on the internet, SIS. What you're looking for is the carb content in the gel because all gels are not made equally, okay? There's gels with more carbs, less carbs. So you need to know how many carbs. You need to be able to map out exactly how many carbs you're getting in. It's not just about, oh, I had a carb gel. It's all right, did I actually get enough carbs to replace what I'm losing and fuel me for the next hour of riding? So if we have a look at these ones here, if you flip the packet around, if you're in the shop, or if you're on the internet, you can have a look here at the facts. Here it says 22 grams of carbs per serving, right? So if we're aiming for 100 grams of carbs at like the top end for an hour of riding, that means you need to have about four of these carb gels every hour, okay? So if you're doing that for eight hours, that's a lot of carb gels that you've got to be able to chew through, okay? The other strategy is if we cut that in half, so let's say you work on 50 grams of carbs and we're not burning through a full 100 grams, then you could have two to three carb gels every hour. So stick them in your pack, make sure your pack is loaded up and you've got enough in there until you get to your next, um, or like for these guys, I think they have two service area or service times throughout the day. So make sure you stock up at the start and then stock up at each service area to make sure that you've got plenty of uh, gels ready to go. But again, you've got to be consuming those gels, having at least three of those gels um, for every hour. The other thing that you can do to help you to get carbs in is in Australia here, we have Powerades, but you guys might have other sports drinks like Maximus or Gatorade. Again, they're a great source of getting carbohydrates in. So you can flick the bottle around or have a look here at the nutrition facts. It tells us one serving and we've got carbohydrates, 35 grams in there. So you can put one of these bottles of Powerade in your Camelback, okay? So again, you've got to map it out and you've got to make sure that you're getting the right amount of carbs in for the amount of riding that you're doing. So if you're just relying on Powerades to get your carbs in, you've got to have like one and a half bottles of Powerade at least every hour of riding. So your Camelback, if it's got three liters in there, should have a fair bit of bloody power rate in there to be able to meet that um, carb requirement. The benefits of doing this is when you're riding and you're at high intensity like these guys are here, what happens is, let's have a look here, like here, they're burning through a lot of carbs, but your heart rate is going through the roof. And what that means is your body is under a lot of stress when this is happening, okay, when you're riding at these levels of effort. Because your body's under a lot of stress and your heart rate's high, your digestive system actually shuts down and doesn't work. That's why you don't feel hungry after you've done a hard gym training, training session or pushed yourself really hard. Once your stress response starts to die down, okay, so like you start to take it easy again, your digestion starts to come back to normal. So what we want to do is still get the energy in even if your heart rate's high and even if your digestion is not very good. And the way we help your body to be able to do that is giving it foods that are easy to digest and it doesn't have to break down. A carb gel, it doesn't have to do much breaking down. Power rate, it doesn't have to do much breaking down because they're both in gel or liquid form. If we were trying to give it whole foods and we're trying to eat, um, I don't know, like trying to have a bacon and egg sandwich right after we've done this race or right before the race, it's going to be very hard for our body to be able to stomach that. So that's why the gels and the power rates are easier. You can use whole foods like um, breads and sandwiches and things like that, but you want to save them for the lower intensity parts of the ride where it's easier for your body to digest the food and you're not going to be working very hard. Um, so that's that. That's the benefit of that. Um, where riders stuff up with this is what they'll do is they'll be doing the tests, right? And we'll skip forward to some of the footage up here. Uh, is they'll be doing some of the tests, right? And they'll be either force feeding food 
right before trying to give themselves energy. And the problem is when you're trying to give yourself energy and you feel like you've already like hit the wall, it's already too late. Okay, so the goal is not to hit the wall and then go, oh, I need something. The goal is to be on top of that from the start. Once you get to that point where you've hit the wall, it's very, very hard to be able to recover and come back from that and get back to normal while you're still flogging the shit out of yourself for the rest of the ride and for the coming days. So that's why it's really important to be on the on the, the front of this and get your dinners and breakfast sorted and have everything mapped out beforehand and know how many gels you need and know what you need to have in your camelback. So like these guys have got their packs. It's extremely important to know what's actually going into that camelback, how much of it you need to drink, how many carbs you're getting in. Because once you hit the wall, you hit the wall. Very, very hard to be able to recover. And that's where a lot of riders go wrong. When you get this right, it feels great because you'll get to day three, day four, day five, or however many days you're doing for your specific um, event. And you'll have that energy there. You'll be tired and you'll be fatigued. That's always going to happen no matter how much training and how much nutrition you get, you have nailed. But then you can ride and get out there and ride like this and be able to keep pushing. You've got like this internal drive. Your body, your brain is still getting carbs. You're still making good decisions. You, you're hurting. You might be tired and fatigued, but you can still push. You've still got that energy there. And that's why you're going to enjoy your racing a lot more because you're going to fly past a lot of other people um, that haven't got this stuff nailed or only worried about it when... Um, they hit the wall and it's too late. The last one um, that I've got, which we've already spoken about a little bit, but it's really nutrient timing. Okay, so if we go back um, over here and we have a look at some of the writing, times need, foods need to be timed properly for you to be able to digest the food. Oh, sorry, foods need, to be, foods need to be able to be timed properly for you to be able to digest the food. If you're going in having a heap of those uh, extremely high calorie foods that fill you up a lot and you're having them like half an hour before you go on a ride, then you're not going to get the energy that you need. So you might be getting the calories in, but you're going to feel shit because you've taken in all this food, but you've just taken it at the wrong time. The same with the gels. Like if you're having the if you're having the gels at um you know for breakfast and then you're trying to have food during the middle of the race, again you might be getting the right stuff in, but you're getting it in at the wrong time. That you're going to have the gels that give you energy quickly way too early and the, your, your energy is going to spike and drop before you've even got out the race. And then you're going to be fueling yourself with all this proper food, which your body can't digest and break down. So it's just going to put tax your system even more than what you're already taxing it with being out on the bike. And it just makes things a lot harder. Um, when you can stomach the food and get the right nutrients in and you time them correctly, that's when the magic happens because you're giving your body the right fuel at the right time and you're giving it the right type of fuel. And that's really important to make sure that everything runs smoothly with your body so that you can perform at the same level um, all the way through the race. Where riders will stuff up with this is they just won't get organized. They'll be so focused on the bike. Like if we look here, like obviously for this rider here, but there's something wrong with his bike, he needs to get it sorted. 100% that that's important and that has to be prioritized. However, you need that same level of priority with your body. And what happens for a lot of riders is they prioritize this, the bike, okay, 100%, and their body is like 0%, or that's 90% bike, 10% rider. And the truth is for this event, yes, the bike's important, and yes, the bike has to go the distance and be set up and all of that, but your body is equally as important. It's probably 50-50. The bike has to be ready to go, and the rider has to be able to ride that thing for the full distance and give it a good crack as well. Um, and so when you start not eating enough food or eating too much food or not eating the right stuff at the right times, that's when you start to feel shit. And then at that point, it doesn't matter how good the bike is because the rider's not able to ride it. When you do get this nailed though, you have a new level of confidence going into these bigger races. Like the bigger races are always scary, especially multi-day. Like they're gonna be hard no matter what, no matter how much training and effort you put into preparing, but you're just gonna enjoy them a hell of a lot more when um, when you've got the fuel there to be able to keep pushing. Um, and you can probably see from some of these guys, I don't know if we can see some of the pit footage, but you know, some guys look confident and like ready to roll and like, yeah, cool, let's go. And some other guys are just absolutely cooked and, um, and spent. So as always, if you've got an enduro race coming up and you'd like to apply some of these uh, strategies into your own training and preparation, um, you can apply for my Faster Laps program. I'll put the link in the comments or the description. Otherwise, hopefully you enjoy this video.